Are you sick of spending 25 bucks or more for 6S packs on your 5-inch drones? Today might be your lucky day. RC Hackers did send me this product to review. I have not been compensated monetarily or by any other means, and no one other than myself has had any editorial influence in this review. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and today we're going to be taking a look at the RC Hackers 1300 mAh 100C 6S Budget Pack. And I want to take a look at this, not only because RC Hackers was kind enough to send me a couple of these, but because I think it might be the best budget battery out there right now. Personally, I fly a ton of packs, and these are my common brands. I've got Ovonic, GMB, and CNHL, and I've spent a lot of money putting together a collection of these packs. Every time I go out, I fly like 14 batteries in a two hour session, and if I could do that for the cost of these packs right here, I would have saved myself a whole bunch of money. So before we talk about the money, let's talk about these packs and who they're being made by. They're being made by RC Hackers. It's a fairly new company on the market when it comes to lithium batteries. Lithium batteries have been around a long time. There's always new players in the market. They're pretty recent. Uh, one great thing about this pack is that even though it is produced in China, it does ship from California. And it got here in about the same amount of time it takes these to get here. Now these are all in the same boat. Literally, they're made in China, and they ship from warehouses in the United States, just like the RC Hackers Pack, except for I paid a lot more for these batteries. And like I said, before we get to the cost of the batteries, I want to head over to the bench, because I think some important things when considering batteries are the weight of the battery, the size of the pack, and how well it's going to hold up after you've put it through some tree crashes or into concrete a few times. You don't want to be replacing your packs all the time. So let's head over to the bench, and first I'm going to take a stab at measuring these so you can kind of get a feel for the size differences between all these packs. And the packs we're going to be taking a look at are the CNHL Black 1300, the GMB 1350 because they don't have a 1300 in the yellow, the Ovonic 1300, and of course the RC Hackers 1300. I'm just going to flip all these on their side real quick so you can get a sense for how small this RC Hackers pack is from the top. It's ridiculous. It's way smaller than any of these other 6S packs. But let's get some calipers on all these things and see what they look like. The first one we're going to measure up is the 1300 CNHL Black. Length is coming in at a hair over 75 millimeters. The width is almost 49 millimeters. And the height is just under 34 millimeters. The main lead's coming in at 80 millimeters long. And the balance lead is probably right at 45 millimeters. As far as the physical aspects of this CNHL Black, it's just chunky. And the thing that has always bothered me about these, you can see it right here, is the outer casing just flakes off in a hurry. This is after like, it starts doing this after like three uses and you start seeing the cells underneath and it's not from puffing, it's just because of the casing they use. It starts to fall apart. It's super brittle and you can see the protection plate at the back here. It's just everywhere, and I have a bunch of these packs, and they all do the same thing. So, not my favorite pack, but still in the lineup. Let's take a look at the next one. And that's going to be the GNB 1350. It's coming in at a little over 75 millimeters long, 46 millimeters wide, and just under 34 millimeters tall. The main lead's coming in in the 80 millimeter range. It's a little bit over. And the balance lead is probably right around 50 usable, actually, with the heat shrink around it. And these packs are actually really well built. I picked the yellow because it has fiberglass protection plates on the outside, which give it a little bit of protection against impacts. And it also has this clear casing so that you can see the cells inside if they start to puff or deform or anything. It's really easy to tell. The casing is made of a pretty forgiving shrink, so it hasn't started to rip or anything. I have no visible signs of damage on these packs. They're actually, they're really well built. GMB is awesome. Uh, so... Highly recommend this one. Don't get the CNHL Black. Just, you know, start here. The third pack we're going to look at is the Ovonic 1300. Coming in at almost 74 millimeters long, almost 45 millimeters wide, and just a hair under 35 millimeters tall. The main lead is again in the 80 millimeter zone, and the balance lead has just a hair under 50 millimeters of usable length. These packs are also really well built, uh, similar to the GMBs. They're really compact, and they don't 
puff and uh, the casing is really forgiving. Now you can't see the cells inside obviously, but it's it's been a really good pack. I'm starting to get a little bit of crack here and there's some silicone around where it goes into the actual pack itself for a little bit of added protection. But uh, yeah, these are really good packs as well. I like them. And last but not least, we're of course gonna look at the 1300 milliamp hour from RC Hackers. It's coming in at just a hair over 74 millimeters long, 41 millimeters wide, and just under 35 millimeters tall. The usable lead length is a little shorter than the rest in the 70 millimeter zone, but the balance port's a little longer with 55 millimeters. And similar to the last two packs we looked at, this uses a really flexible heat shrink on the outside as well. Again, it doesn't have the ability to see the cells inside, but you know, that's not for everybody. It's really well built. I haven't had any cracking or any denting from crashes and I have crashed on concrete into trees and lots of other things with them, just like I have with the other packs. It has the silicone boots there too for the lead insertions and uh, yeah, all in all really well tight, dense pack. Now I don't know that it was clear to you in the bench measurements because I went through them pretty quick, but that means that this RC Hackers pack is the same dimension in length, but is smaller in every other dimension than any of these common packs people run today. It's the smallest pack I own, but does that mean that the 1300 milliamp hour rating is a lie and that it's not really 100C? I've been flying these for a while now and I've actually put 60 cycles on each of these packs. I have about the same amount of cycles on these packs. And as I've been flying, I've been going back and forth between the batteries and trying to get a feel for any additional sag or any difference in the amount of time I get. Now my flight style is pretty intense, some people would say, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little video down in the bottom left corner of me flying this pack. And if you wanna see the full video in 5K, I'll put a little thing up here that shows you that if you want to go check it out. But don't click off the video yet. You want to continue to watch this because you might save yourself some money if you do. But all of that is to say that I get roughly the exact same flight time between all three of these packs and these packs within about 5%. And when I am charging them back up from 3.8 volts storage, I get about the same milliamp hours up to 4.2 volts. So that means the capacity should be right on the mark with the 1300. Now the GMB is just a hair more than that. I don't think GMB lies very much about their milliamp hour rating and the 1350 seems to hold true. But as far as the other 1300s, the RC Hackers stays right there with them as far as the milliamp hours go. The 100C rating, I haven't had any problem with any of these packs getting as much as my ESCs can pull. And I run 2208 motors and 55 amp ESCs, and I know I'm pulling a boatload of amps, or at least as much as my ESC can handle. I'm also doing it in 110, 120 degree weather. I flew all of these packs in the last month in that weather. None of them have puffed, which is actually pretty nice and surprising. I kind of figured the CNHL would go. These things tend to puff and the case cracks and I'll never buy another CNHL black ever again. Now you might have better luck, but I have about eight of them and they're all experiencing the same problems. I have about 10 of the Ovonics and about eight of the GMBs and they're fine all day long. Now I don't have as many of the RC hackers, but from the 60 cycles I put on it, I've gotten no puff and no degradation that I could tell. I still feel the same power out of it that I did the first time I flew it it's holding up really well. I've put it through a bunch of crashes and no damage to the case. You saw in the bench video, it was pretty much undamaged. In fact, the only battery that's taken any real damage is again, the CNHL Black, because you probably just shouldn't buy that one. Well, one more thing before we get into the cost of these batteries, and that's the weight. So let's head back to the bench. I'm gonna throw them all on the scale real quick so you can get a comparison. Now, if you don't know, the reason why weight is important in a battery is because that's actually where a lot of the weight of your quad comes from. Most quads might be under 500 grams all up before you put the battery on. And these things really add some chunky weight. So some people really like to keep the weight down on their quad by running lightweight batteries, but they also don't wanna sacrifice milliamp hours to get there or current draw. So since these are all about the same as far as current draw and milliamp hours, let's go weigh them and see which one is the lightest out of these four packs. 
So the scale's all zeroed. Let's see what the CNHL black weighs first. Right at 230 grams. Next up is the GMB yellow. 212 grams. Third will be the Ovonic. 214 grams, pretty respectable. And last but maybe least is the RC Hackers. 208 grams for that pack. 206 if you leave it there for a second. We'll go with 208. That means yet again that this RC Hackers pack is smaller and lighter than all of its competition, or at least the competition that I have and have flown in my FPV career. I don't know how they're doing it. Again, I think the 1300 is right on here in the 100C based on the charging and the flying that I've done in these packs. I have a lot of cycles, 60 cycles on all of them in the past month. They're all performing the same, and they're all charging about the same, and the internal resistance hasn't changed significantly on any of these packs. I don't know how they're cramming it all in here and making it so small, but it's got to be something to do with the chemistry or the quality of the components going into these batteries. But that's not the most important thing, is it? The most important thing is how much do they cost? Yeah, I know you've been waiting for that. But I went out and looked at all the FPV websites I could find that sold these packs and these packs. And uh, some were on more places than others, but the prices were very similar across them. So let's take a look at the cost of all these packs. And then we'll come back for some conclusions. But so far, if you've liked this video and it's been helpful, please consider giving it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. If this video is helpful, maybe it'll help people see it out there and pick a good pack for their budget builds or their first builds that they're going to run into a tree or just stock up on a bunch of batteries so they can fly more. I appreciate it. Now let's take a look at the prices on these things. And the first two packs we're going to look at pricing for are the CNHL Black and the GMB Yellow. The CNHLs were available at a lot of stores, but the price was all the same. It's $29.99 for a single CNHL Black, unless you catch it on sale somewhere, and I didn't see any sales right now. The GMB wasn't as available, so I caught that one on Pyrodrone where it was available, and it came in at $27.99. Not too shabby, but uh, it's still $27.99 at least per pack if you go this route. This next pack I actually found a couple of prices for, although none of it was on FPV sites. The Ovonic packs aren't readily available on most FPV sites. You either have to get them from Ovonic or from Amazon, actually. And uh, from Ovonic, they are actually running a sale right now, so you can get four of them in a pack, and they come out to $27 each. If you just want to buy one of them, it is $31 per pack for this. Now these are great packs and I, I have flown these for a very long time and I love these packs and I actually bought this one not too long ago because I just wanted some more of them. But $31 really eats into your FPV budget, doesn't it? And sticking with the trend, the RC Hackers comes in at 18 bucks a pack. Now there are some considerations there for this $18 pack because you can only get it from RC Hackers. It's very similar to the Ovonix where you can get it in their store. The Ovonics you can get on Amazon though. Another thing with the RC Hackers is that you can only buy them in multiples of two. So they have a set of two on there and each one of those two comes out to $18 a piece before shipping. Now, again, as I said in the beginning of this video, all of these packs are available from United States warehouses. So you're not having to wait from China to get these. They ship out of California and mine actually only took three days to get to Texas which I thought was pretty reasonable, you know, not too bad at all. Now, when you go to the website and look at these, and there will be links in the description below for all of these packs, uh, when you go to the RC Hackers website to look at these, you will notice that the two-pack has a discount markout. However, I have confirmed that that discount is going to hang around as the price for at least the foreseeable future. It could end at some point, but for now, you can get them for $18 a piece. So if you are looking to stock up on some 6S batteries and you don't want to break the bank, I think the RC Hackers are the way to go. If you bash the crap out of your batteries and you don't intend to have for any of them to have a long, decent life, then again, the RC Hackers is probably the way to go. If you were a racer, you might want to get something with more C rating. I'm not a racer, so 
it's not a consideration for me, but I know a lot of racers prefer 120C, and they really mean it when they want the 120C. So you might want to go that route if you're not freestyling, but if you are freestyling and you're starting out, or again, looking to just expand your collection of 6S packs, or maybe refresh a bunch of old packs that you've been cycling for a while, right now would be a good time to pick up some RC Hackers, because they are running at that $18 price point. And like I said, everything in FPV is getting more expensive. I don't know how they're producing them at that price point and selling them, but while they are, you might consider getting some of them because I really like them. I think that I might convert all of my cycled packs into RC Hackers packs because they're just so light and small and easy to strap down and I can beat the crap out of them and they just work really well. And I don't feel so bad when I've blown up an $18 battery. So kudos, RC Hackers. I think you got a great product. I don't know how you're doing it. You're very surprising. <laughs> but somehow, it really held up. 60 cycles is quite a few for FPV batteries. Some people's don't even last that long. And mine still flies like the day I got it. The only one that's having a problem is the CNHL. If you take nothing away from this video, take away that you should never purchase a CNHL black pack. You will be disappointed. And if you've had a good experience with them, or any of these batteries for that matter, please leave a comment down below. i like to know what your favorite pack is and why. And if you care about the weight or the measurements or even the cost, let me know what you think about your packs and why you run your favorite ones in the comments. Well, thanks again for watching. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you go buy a bunch of packs. Maybe they're RC hackers, maybe they're not. But if they are, enjoy them, because I have been. Thanks, RC hackers, for sending these to me. I think that uh, you just created a new money sinkhole for my FPV addiction. Anyway, I gotta go buy some batteries now. So, I'll catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.